Welcome to the Straight Talk Vermont show. I'm Bruce Wilson, the executive director of Straight Talk Vermont. And I want to make a couple of announcements. Um, those of you who um, don't know, we have an art gallery called Art So Wonderful in the University Mall. Please come by and check it out. Um, it's there. And uh, we have, um, we, we, we're, we're trying to get more artists involved in, in putting art in our gallery so you can contact um, us, Art So Wonderful. And uh, hopefully you can come visit and bring your family and friends. It's a very incredible looking place. And uh, I think uh, we're going to be doing some murals inside that mall this fall. Um, right, Fiona? Yeah. yeah. So I have um, some, well, we're going to introduce ourselves. And some, I have an incredible guest, Lauren McBride from Principal of Burlington High School. She's sitting right to my right. We're going to talk to her in a minute. Hi. And Go ahead. Hello. What up? <laughs> <laughs> well, Fiona, you can introduce yourself. I'm Fiona Winter. I am the executive assistant to Bruce and his creative consultant. Yes. You know what? I, I really like that part about her being a, my creative consultant because <laughs> <laughs> she has some incredible ideas. That, yeah. You know, like today she was talking about some things that we should do at the University Mall with a project that she thought would be and uh, uh, encompass all the things we do. Yeah. And sure enough, she, she's working the deal right now. Oh, oh, how incredible is that? I'm like so excited. I'm like, I like, she was like, Bruce, we should do this and have this studio and, you know, say it. Say it. I saw those things you say. A space with all of the things that are included in Service Rendered and Art So Wonderful and one, like under one roof so that there's studio space, gallery space, space for music recording and dance and all of it in one area. That would be amazing. That would be amazing. I know. <laughs> and, and, it's, and it's happening. And be it's right up the street from us. So yeah. Yes. You know. yeah. Well, this one is in University Mall. Oh, Mark. University Mall. But, but okay. it's happening. It is. Oh, my God. So thank you for being our creative consultant. Of course. <laughs> so why don't you start it off? Why don't you start the show off with our interviews? All right. Uh, so today we're talking to Lauren McBride about the future of BHS and what's going on there right now. And um, yeah, so do you want to talk a little bit about like the beginning of your life in education and where your interest comes from? Sure. So I um, sure. So thank yeah. you. Um, thank you. I'm excited to be here. Um, I, this is first time I've been on camera like this, so it's a little <laughs> exciting um, and awesome. different. So I appreciate yeah. it. Um, so I'd say my um, my start into education, um, and I won't go, you know, the super long version of it, but um, I grew up, I, I want to say like I grew up for the first 21 years of my life in third grade. Um, my mom was a third grade teacher. <laughs> and so um, I, you know, so I, education was really alive, um, like alive in my household and something that was always really valued and important. And when I started to graduate from college and think about my future, future career, I was like, no, I'm not going into education. I'm going to move to a big city and do something, you know, that's different and be a businesswoman and, mm -hmm. you know, a power, like wear a power suit. And um, I moved to D.C. I sold commercial real estate in D.C. Mm -hmm. And after three years, I was like, wow, this is not what I want. Um, education is in my in my blood. And um, I went back to grad school and then said, well, I'll never I'm ready to be a teacher. And then I was like, but I won't be a third grade teacher. And then I was a third grade teacher <laughs> <laughs> for the next um, <laughs> for the that. next seven years. Wow. Wow. Um, and I had the, the good fortune of being able to teach um, third grade. I, I've taught in um, different st states across the country, different types of schools. Um, and that, I think, provided me with a really amazing lens on just public education um, and what it looks like um, just in the United States and how um, revered and valued um, we as educators are up here in New England. Um, I taught in Arizona for a little bit, and it's, um, it's interesting to see how this looks in, in different parts of the country. Um, at a certain part of my career, I started developing curriculum, and I started moving into the consulting realm a little bit by um, working with educators and other schools and talking about um, literacy, content, and curriculum. And so I started to find a passion for the curriculum and instruction work, which ended me um, in getting a job at um, the Department of Education in Massachusetts, where I worked in um, district and school turnaround, where we supported schools in the greater Boston area um, that were undergoing sort of hardships and, and thinking about school improvement. Um, and then also worked in the Department of Curriculum and Instruction mm -hmm. as a literacy specialist. 
So I did that for a number of years. I worked with a bunch of different districts in and around greater Boston. And then um, my um, partner and I decided that we were ready for a family and wanted to get out of um, Boston and um, find some space um, that we could live a life that we thought we wanted to raise our children in. Mm -hmm. And that brought us to Vermont. Mm -hmm. um, and so as we were looking, um, as I was looking for jobs, there was um, an assistant principal position that was open at Burlington High School. Mm -hmm. And um, sure enough, um, you know, kind of took a leap and ended up as the assistant principal in Burlington High School. Um, I started back in 2018, 18, mm -hmm. um, and um, then was an assistant principal for two and a half years and then stepped into the principal role um, as an interim principal last year and then took the permanent position in May. And wow. here I am. <laughs> so it's funny because, um, so you did 21 years in third grade with your mother and then uh, seven years yeah. teach, as, a, as a third grade teacher. So that's yes. like 28 years 20 in third years grade. 28 years in third grade. It's <laughs> <laughs> impressive. Yeah, it's impressive. Yeah, it's <laughs> impressive. So I'll tell you a funny story. So my son, like, uh, he, um, he lives in Boston and uh, he does commercial uh, real estate as well. And so one year he said, Dad, Dad, I, I made $16,000. I said, how long did it take you to make? He said, just now. Yeah. One yeah. deal. So, so I mean, you know, for you, I don't know. I don't know if you, I think that was making more money back in uh in a commercial broker, broker yeah. Than, yeah. Than being a but it wasn't teacher. um i i it was an amazing experience but it realized i realized really quickly what i wasn't passionate about i think i needed that to help um kind of have me think about like mm -hmm. what my value like what i really wanted to make out of my career sure, sure. um so i think it was an invaluable experience no, no, I um I and i i walked away from it um you know ready to it made me really ready to jump into education. Yeah, and yeah. so when I went back to, to grad school, like I knew that that was what I wanted. Like I had the fire in my belly, I was sure. ready to go, and I was committed to like having this be my path. You knew one so, thing that you could teach third grade. You knew that I did, for a fact. I did, but I, I didn't. I, I swore I was never going to teach third grade, and then I ended up in third grade, <laughs> um, which I ended up loving because I oh, do think third God, graders third are, grade. they're, it's a, kind of an amazing year. My <laughs> third grade teacher was yeah. Miss Taylor. Very nice. It <laughs> was Miss Re Miss Rebello was Ms. mine. Rebello. So yeah. Miss so nice. Taylor. <laughs> yeah. So let's hear a little bit about your vision for the future of BHS. Uh, so um, BHS is in this pretty amazing and interesting place right now. I mean, obviously we are not in our original building. We've been moved into um, our downtown BHS campus, which is a converted Macy's, which mm -hmm. everyone knows. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I think that there's a lot of really, being downtown has offered us, um, and being in a new building has sort of offered us this ability to, um, to reset in a way and really take a step back and think about um, you know, what the experience that we want for our students, um, I think like in, in, in high school. And so we've been really, um, you know, thinking about that we have this opportunity, we're downtown, there's community partnerships, um, there's experiences that we now have access to that, um, you know, Institu 52 Institute Road was not that far away, but it was far enough that in order to get downtown during the day, it was, it added another layer of planning and, and now we're just right there. Um, so I think like, you know, our vision is, is that we want students to have an experience that they look back on and, and they, feel that they had access to a really powerful education, that they were challenged in the classroom, but they also had the experience to, um, you know, follow their interests and try things that maybe they wouldn't have tried um, in the past um, and had the ability to engage in like different flexible pathways towards accumulation of credit, which may, you know, help to inform their college or their career path, whatever path they choose. Um, and so I think in the midst of that, we also are looking to really be a community that supports and wraps around our students. I mean, the past year and a half has been challenging, um, I think, for educators across the country. And I want to specifically say for like our, our educators and our students here in Burlington, um, those that lost a building um, in the midst of a pandemic and then had to relocate. Um, so we also want to make sure that our community is a warm and inviting place yeah. where students feel seen and valued and and, and heard. Mm -hmm. And also a good thing too is that they right downtown to um, downtown transit center. Yes. The Green, um, Green Mountain Transit downtown transit center, where it's like every bus goes through anywhere they want to go. Yes. Need to go to. And how how wonderful is that? And it's right there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's that's 
That's incredible. You don't have um, students like lagging or hanging around. They, they didn't really have no need to unless they're doing after school programs. They can get right on the bus and go go home. Yeah. You know, or go wherever they wherever they're going. And so many of those uh, so many of those students had to like use that um, our, the bus transfer like at, to transfer to get onto another bus. Right. So for so many, it's cut right. down their travel time mm -hmm. and their ability to get to school too. So it's it's really it's helped to increase. Um, just access in terms of being that close yeah. and, and not having to add one more bus, you know, on into the mix. And another thing too is that we're going to be looking for. I'm on um, Green Mountain Transit um, Justice, Equity, Div Diversion, and Inclusion program. I'm on an advisory, and I'm going to be looking for students to okay. be joining this advisory. I already have, um, Veronica Lindstrom has already joined, and so we're going to be looking for all those students to join that um, advisory, help make some of the decisions around. Um, one of the things is how um, Green Mountain Transit uh, operates, you know, because um, they ride that bus more than anybody, you, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So it's important that they help make the decisions of what's happening that with, would, um, with Green, um, GMT. That would be amazing. Yeah. Um, we, I, th I think one of the things that's also stood out to me as we've started the school year is just the, the power and the voice that our students have. And so I think the more that we can include them to be at the table, like whether that's, mm -hmm. you know, school um, issues that are happening at school and like, you know, um, decisions that are being made there, but also within the community helps them to, to then have that experience to see like the, the power and the, the influence that they can have. No doubt about it. They need to be right up, right with everybody else in making yeah. decisions. And we, um, we work tireless to make that happen. We've been doing this since mm -hmm. 2001, you know, and so youth on boards is, is our, you know, you know they need to be there to help us make decisions on, on whatever's going on, you know what I mean? Because I think everything that we're doing and is some by for some youth, you know what I'm saying? Everything you're working on, everything the Fiona's working on, everything I'm working on, it's got to do with the the whoever's gonna take over to take over. Yeah. And we want them to take over, um, like, oh Bruce ain't doing this no more, you know, and, but we worked with him, so we don't have to scrap everything. We just want our men to the following, you know what I mean? We now we know what we're gonna be doing, right? Then we could always help there to help him help not help him but help make the decision. So yeah. that's how it should be. That's great. Yeah. yeah. That's totally how we've agree. been doing it for since 2001. So. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, no doubt. Got to do it that way. I, I won't change. <laughs> a lot of people say, Bruce, I need you to come here and work with the youth and, and uh, do this and do arts and music and this and that and education. I said, well, I got to get a youth board first. I got to put together a youth board first because I might be able to have the answers based on what, you know, I'll probably have a good answer based on what they might say, but... <laughs> I just, I just, I just but they come I with so, it. I mean, our youth yeah. come with so much experience and just so much voice and, and oh, yeah. interest, too. So I think it's like having their voice be at the table yeah, is, is, is huge. Got to. Yeah. Yeah, I want, I, I, she, Fiona knows, we, we, yeah. we have youth, we have our, our youth um, at the table making decisions about, like, uh, Veronica Lindstrom, like, for instance, at your school, and um, uh, Valina, uh, Valina um, Zirkel at BTC mm -hmm. making yeah. decisions on planning all our events and stuff. That's great. How powerful that is. And, and um, Veronica Lindstrom, she sat down with, with those, like I said, the um, city um, councilor chair and, you know, and a um, member of the um, city council. And we designed the whole, we revamped the whole resolution for youth on boards. Awesome. You know, added youth more committees and, and we, uh, <coughs> um, added new, and voting rights. So, you know, she was right there. <laughs> we, I wasn't going to make a move in, in, into whatever she had to say. We were going to write, put it down, bro. Put it down. Yeah. Oh, I love yeah. it. So yeah. that's, that's so important. Yeah. What are the like more applicable ways that you've actually gone about including those voices? Um, so this year, right now, we're in the process of, um, the district is actually in the process of, do, of um, revamping our strategic plan. And mm -hmm. so we have had um, a coalition of students and family and board members and community members that have been helping to meet um, with our district leaders to help to identify like what are the priorities for us as a district to continue to move on. Um, and I think student voice has been really powerful um, in that planning piece. I sat in a meeting on Tuesday um, with a student talking about one of the priority areas and really being able to like utilize like his experience to help us to like action plan and think about like what we could do differently as we move ahead. Um, over the summer, we had a racial justice academy that met um, at Hunt Middle School, and there were about um, 56 youths, I believe, that were part of that academy. Um, and they um, came to us with a list of recommendations of things that they saw as potential inequities or areas that we can look at as a school to improve. 
Um, one of those things that we've heard loud and clear from them has been the, um, our current student handbook, which is archaic. It's been the same student handbook that mm -hmm. kind of has been like looked at and like tweaked over the sure. course of however many years. Um, and there's been a real, um, there, there was a real strong message from this group that we need to look at this document and like mm -hmm. actually look at it through like an equity focused lens and look at some of our policies and think like, are these still the right policies? And so that work is, we're getting ready to launch that work and what we're seeing this as is an opportunity for students to be at the table to help us comb through that, that handbook um, and to have influence over like, what do these policies mean? What do they look like and how does it impact um, like their ability to access education and also set some clear parameters for, for their, you know, their experience at the high school. Um, so that's work that we're looking to, that we heard from the summer, we're getting ready to launch and then we'll um, be working through the rest of the year in sort of a task force um, with the idea of having it ready to go next school year. That's amazing. Um, and then they also, I guess, uh, in the spring of last year, um, we had a task force that included students, also some parents and community members and faculty that looked at our bell to bell schedule. So when does a school day start? When does a school day end? And there was a lot of, um, we put out surveys and received a lot of feedback on, we figured if we can learn anything over the pandemic, there have to be some things that we can learn that we do differently, knowing that the only group of students that knew our original bell to bell schedule are our current juniors that had it for half of the year and seniors. Mm -hmm. And so we had a task force that kind of analyzed our schedule, thought about things that were different through the, I think the 18 <laughs> different schedules we had based on last year, um, because we had so many different iterations of um, instruction from remote to one day a week in person to then moving into downtown BHS. Mm -hmm. um, they surveyed people, they looked at other schedules of what other schools across the nation do, um, and they helped us to totally revamp our schedule. And so um, our Bell to Bell schedule is new this year, and um, there was actually just an article in our school newspaper about it, and overwhelmingly um, students have been really happy with the way that the new schedule runs. We start later in the day, mm -hmm. we end a little bit later, which is really good in terms of like, if you look at brain science and development, um, of, you know, of adolescent youth um, um, or young adults, um, we, it shows that this later start is actually better and many of them are more present in the morning. You know, first bell or first block is not like, ooh, it's, it's rough, just rolled out of bed, was up until 3 a.m. Now they have a little bit of extra time mm -hmm. to, to be more present and alert in the classroom. So it's, so it's That's great. very interesting because um, Fiona's got, she's putting together like an equity program education. We're doing an educational series, right, with CCTV, but we also, Fiona's been, been showing me stuff, um, some links about um, equity and education. You want to talk a little bit about that? Um, yeah, we're just talking about how we can work with schools in public education and start talking about the disparities across public education and the differences in experience um, across different states, yeah. like you were talking about earlier. Um, and yeah, it's very much in the beginning stages. But yeah, and so yeah. it'd be nice to you know we can figure out ways that we can uh, you know because work with students because like one thing Fiona was telling me that she wanted to compare like our school system based on what other schools are doing across the country like yeah. you, like you have already done some um some due diligence you already um have um, yeah. looked into some of the things and and uh, it'd be interesting maybe we can find some of what they the outcome measurements are or what you found yeah it, and, um yeah. and equity and um so how do you how do you see equity in um um you know, we're definitely the, the diversity in BHS is like, <laughs> is no doubt. Awesome. But how do you, and you yeah. have incredible, like, um, interpreters. You have, you know, you have the incredible uh, system how you work with people who from other countries. You know, you, it, it took a long time. It's been for years you guys have been doing that. You know, so that's, that's you know, that's incredible. I, I appreciate that. But how do you see yourself working on uh, making sure that students, what does that mean, should I say, with equity and inclusion? What does that mean when yeah. you work with students in, in your school? How's that, that, how does that tie into curriculum and um, um, culture mm -hmm. and, and, you know, ethnicities? You know, how does that, yeah. how does that work? So I think it, 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 it lives in so many different ways. I think um, some of the work that we're doing within our departments is really being thoughtful to ensure that, like, our students and their experience and 
the places that our students come from, the experiences that they have, um, are representative within within the content. And so, if we look at English, our English department as a um, as a model of that, or just as an example of that, they've done a lot of work over the years of being really thoughtful about updating the text that they're that they're using within those different um, classes. So they want to make sure that there is um, representation of a variety of characters that are being. Um, and their stories that are being told through these. So we're, we're getting rid of, we're not getting rid of, we're being thoughtful about the text that we have and making sure that we are also looking at who our students are, like where they come from, what their experience is, and making sure that we amend, refine, you know, maybe let go of some to be able to bring in other new higher quality or other high quality texts that represent the students and that way they can see themselves in, in that versus just reading you know, the same story that's been, or the same text that's been read year after year after year. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that the other way that we start to see this is really being thoughtful about the use of data. Um, I think that there's data that is used in multiple ways. We obviously have, um, you know, the, the number data. So looking at like, what are the SBAC scores from the state telling us what is data within you know, are like how are students entering into high school and like what classes are they accessing, you know, in the math, like in, in math are they accessing on level courses, below level courses. And I think having honest conversations about like what, who are student, like who are the students in what classes and how do we have to make sure that we increase our capacity to, um, to provide more opportunities for students to be able to succeed. And so using not only like you know number data, but also using what we call street data, which is um, like the which are the experiences and, and really thinking about like what are students saying when we talk to them and what are the things that that they say about their experience that we have to also incorporate like as we look at the numbers because it shouldn't just be about the numbers. They the numbers also have a voice to them too, and mm -hmm. so um, these conversations are at the kind of the forefront of a lot of the the conversations that we have within our departments within our school. Um, our leadership team, um, my le our leadership team is brand new. I don't know if you know that, but um, we have, this is my first year as principal. Um, I have three new assistant principals and I have a dean of, student for, dean of students for the first time ever. Um, and so um, together we retreated over the summer and we created like what is our vision and what is it that, um, how are we going to operate as a leadership team? And as we tease this apart, we have this graphic that lives in all of our offices. and. At the core, it says like equitable outcome, outcomes for students. And so whenever a decision is made, um, our team pushes each other and we go back to that graphic and we say, wait a second, like is this student centered? Is this helping to create more access for all of our students, our students on the margins? Um, and if the answer is no, then, then we have to be okay to toss it because if it's not about them at the center, then we're not doing our job. So we're really focused on trying to, to to be mindful and make sure that voices are heard and, and incorporated as we as we go. Yeah. Well, um, I, I know um, Ms. Tom Flanagan told, um, told me that uh, the superintendent of schools school district said you have um, I think uh, Mr. Sparks running um, equity inclusion club or something like that. Um, uh. so we have so we have we had the racial justice academy that ran over the summer and then we they meet on Fridays during our um, extended like choice time um, time. Um, and then we also have um, our My Brother's Keeper group and My Sister's Keeper group. Oh, that's My Sister's Keeper. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Do you <laughs> want to talk about the um, extracurricular time a little bit? Yeah, so I, one of the other great things about our schedule this year was that we recognized that the student experience is obviously about academics at its core, but it's not just about academics, that students also have a variety of interests. Um, and things that they care deeply about. And there are also barriers and obstacles that sometimes prohibit students from being able to access all of those things. And so we were seeing specifically extracurriculars and after school activities as a place that was suffering um, in the past that they, some of our enrollment data was down, people weren't showing up because they had competing um, after school um, um, conflicts, whether that was caring for siblings, going to work, um, athletics, drama. 
And so we have, in, every Friday we now have something called Choice Time and it's about an hour. And it provides a time for our extracurricular clubs, our extracurriculars and clubs to be able to meet in the school day. And so now we have students that are able to come to these meetings that, have, that weren't coming to them in the past for a variety of reasons. Um, and we're looking, and also during that time, there's you know targeted um, study halls for our, our study sessions, um, tutoring help in specific content areas, and so students all opt in to be able to um, attend. One, I think we offer about 50 in the 50s every Friday, so there's lots to choose from, um, and all students are opt into a place. They sign up, and that's where they go for that Friday, and they have the ability to change the next Friday. So. If I wanted to go get extra help in science one week, but I really am interested in the chess club the next week, um, I have the ability to go to different ones um, and opt in as I, as I choose, which has been really great. And I think mm -hmm. a, a nice break for students to be able to, um, to pursue passions that are not necessarily um, you know, um, anchored in like content. Has enrollment increased since you've done that um, uh, So. Um, so it had. I think it, the beginning of choice time was a little was a little wonky mm -hmm. um, because this was a brand new structure, and I think students in the first couple of weeks were like, "What is this?" Mm -hmm. You know, wait a second. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that as we've now moved into this more and more, we're seeing um, a lot more buy-in from students who are excited to be able to go and have that time. You know, within these different, mm -hmm. um, within the different, um, the different opportunities that are offered. I think one of the things I'm looking to explore is how do we bring in more. Um, I, I would love to have community members come in and talk about like what does it mean for them to do a, a role that they do within the community or to, to talk about their experience in high school and then life after high school. Mm -hmm. I think if we can offer even some more of those like choices or those like guest speakers to come in and share like their love and their passion, I think that they're um, we may even be able to have students see options that they may not even know exist after high school. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm hopeful that this this time, which is you know it's still in its infancy, is going to continue to grow and, and feel valuable to students at the school. Sounds incredible. Let's see. Yeah, um, <clears throat> so we, like we said, we know they still still need 40 hours to graduate, 40 hours community service to graduate. Yes. Yes. And so um, I know. It's, you know, being um, where the world is today, you know, it's kind of tough to get those hours. Um, do Do you have any ideas how they how they are getting those hours? Yeah. So we did. Um, so for last year's graduating class, um, and then for this year's graduating class, we did waive um, ten of those hours just based on COVID restrictions and not being able to potentially do some of the the activities that students had done in the past. Um, as we are looking forward, I think that there's, we have our BHS Heroes, which is a, a group that's on campus, and they are weekly putting out different opportunities for students to be able to opt in for community service. It ranges from like a clothing drive to being able to, there was something recently, I think that there's a bazaar happening at a local community um, church in a couple weeks, and we offered an opportunity for students to go and like help um, help to be on site and support mm -hmm. um, that event or do some bake sales. So we're trying to be able to, to, to hit different, um, think outside the box and think about other things happening within the community and, and partner with different community members to, to help to support students to see other options to be able to earn those hours. That's awesome. For many, many, I don't know how many years, a lot of years, like um, BHS students have, we have, I think I told you we gave them uh, community service opportunities. I mean, I don't know how many times students come to me ready to graduate, and I'm like, Bruce, I need community service. I'm like, well, I'm not going to graduate. I said, well, how many hours do you need? They say, 40. 40, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. Oh, you with us every day, buddy. Yeah. You know, yep. you with us every day. But yep. so, <laughs> so one of the things I talked to Tom um, Flanagan about the superintendent schools is uh, um, Burlington School District is to um, – we want to work with students based on what their goals and dreams, aspirations, are, and let them complete their 10 hours doing those things. Yeah. That way you have um, like all the things you said that, that you, you, you guys do. Um, but um, I think I think they, well, we know for a fact that they enjoy that better because now we can help them with the, 
you know, whatever, whatever they want to do, we hook them, we connect them with the people, you know, we go with them or connect them to whatever they want to do in life. And so how important is that? Like I said, yeah. the best community service is those applied upon themselves. And I, I know that for a fact because we have a lot of measurements yeah, from it. But absolutely. So, so we, we still like to be able to do that with the students. You know, I was talking to, um, I think, Deanna Bradley or um, yep. um, Cheryl. Yeah, Cheryl. About, Hedick, yep. Cheryl, about... Um, about that, you know, yeah. I mean, that we want um, them to refer students, or how do we get students to work with us? How do whatever we need to do? Yeah, do it, is that so, yeah, I think I think um, I think that's amazing, and it's it's such a great opportunity for students mm -hmm. to be able to do things that are hands on. That may be something that they're interested in that allows them to either see and say like, oh yeah, this is something that I want to continue to learn more about or be like, oh, I thought it was, but maybe I need to try something else, yeah. which, which I think is, is, right. is, is learning too. I mean, that was me when I was yeah. in DC, I so I, I understand. Yeah, um, awesome. And um, I think that, so I, I would love to help increase like spreading awareness for that. I think we can work with our school counselors, sure. um, spread awareness within our BHS Heroes um, extracurricular group and, and I think do any sort of outreach. Um, so I'd love to continue to talk no about, about ways it. that we can do that. Yeah, that would no be doubt about amazing. it, because um, that's so important. You know, that's so important. Um, like, um, man, you know, we get, we have, we get referrals to the course, to the course in rapid restorative justice, rapid intervention, community justice centers. And we get referrals in other ways too. And like they say, well, we go see Bruce, you know, for the community yeah. service office. They might have 50, 50 hours of community service. To do you know and so we go do something we don't you know we say come on help us clean up our art gallery or our youth centers or help us you know do um um sell some items that we have from our sponsors or whatever and um the other 25 hours guess what we're gonna use that for what we're gonna we're gonna use it on you you know we'll help you um what's your goals dreams and aspirations you know i prefer to see people do working towards their ged or adult diploma mm -hmm. you know with their community service hours than to be like you know picking up crap out the park, whatever, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yep. How important is that? Every taxpayer in America would love to see that happen. Totally. Then there's somebody picking, because they learn them from, first of all, another thing too, they get angry that they got to pick dog crap out the I park. Know. I know. I don't blame them. Yeah, no. I, <laughs> I don't blame them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this is meaningless. And it don't change the thinking that put them at risk. It don't change the, the reasons why they doing community service anyways right. through the court. This way they have new alternatives to the thinking that put them at risk as well as um, they, they learn new, new things to do. They want, I don't know how many people I see in the streets today or what they like, can we, what, when are you going to have another concert? When we gonna, what can we do? You know, they want to do more yeah. and more. Yeah. You know, so that's. I think that's awesome. I, I, yeah. I mean, however we, I, however we can help to support that. I mean, and if, if we, if the fact that there's community members that are willing, that are eager to have students that are helping, I think it's great. I, I do. I think hands-on learning opportunities is some of the best learning that you can have because you're actually applying and seeing. You're, it, it's that connection to the classroom that now you see that value of of why that class is important because you're seeing it play out and how it can impact your life, like within as a community member and, and you know part of the workforce. So. No doubt about it. And so I, I stand by that forever. You know what I mean? You know, the best community service is mm -hmm. those apply them on themselves, and that's yep. for real. And that's where you want to do it anyways. And then, like, yeah. like we do all the murals. Remember, we got 60% of the murals are through our art program. Yeah. A lot of times we get people who, like, they call bomb the wall, you know, put their little initials They're on it. They're tagging it. Yeah, <laughs> tagging. yeah, yeah. You know? So we say, guess what? Because, uh, you know, because we believe in restorative justice, we're all going to clean this wall up. But guess, guess what? What? The rest of your community service, you put a, a mural that you can show your mama. Yeah. Bring your, and the police will hand you a paintbrush, awesome. the paint, and then and that's what and that's what our that's how our, our, our so wonderful um, mural pr program started. That's by awesome. helping people just like that. Yeah. And so all these cool murals everywhere, as you know, you see them everywhere. You know, the yeah. Graffiti ones, all that. You know. Love it. And uh, and so and and then we have measurements where we have uh, graffiti from vandals to artists who we put on show like you know at. Uh, Friend space. We put them in shows at uh, Echo, at a uh, um, lot of art places like uh, the uh, um, Daily Planet, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, they showcase the art and sell it. We yeah. put on art show every year at the Marriott for nine years, going on nine years now. They were selling art at two, three thousand dollars a pop. That's amazing. You know what I mean? We yeah. kids were like bombing the wall. You know what I'm saying? That's so awesome. all you gotta do is give them, give them, help them with their goals and aspirations. I'm telling you. That's the way that you got to do it, you know. Yeah. You just can't say, go clean up that graffiti. And then, then they clean up canvas, nice canvas, and they go back and bomb it again. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I, I like, I mean, we have a lot of white walls too, so I'm happy to. <laughs> yeah, we, we definitely yeah. want to be Fill it with some student art. <laughs> and and we, we, we learned something about doing that too. It's like, like the, the individuals who bomb the walls or, you know, um, uh, when they put the nice mural up there, you know, uh, and they put their name on it, the other um, vandals, they don't touch them. I know. It's a, it's a yeah. mano mano. Yeah. They won't touch them, you know what I mean? And then we tell our guys to tell your friends who's bombing the wall, come work with us. Yeah. Well, we got walls. Yeah. That's why we got walls. That's why we got mules everywhere. Else. Yeah. That's and amazing. liquor boxes are ours too. Yeah. That's so, awesome. Uh, yeah. <laughs> We'd love to come to school and put some mules up there, get some ideas from your students, your art teachers, and, and whoever. Yeah. That sounds great. <laughs> like, sounds great. <laughs> well, well, you, would you, you would put murals in the, in the, all those walls are white. I know they are. So, there, oh, a couple weeks ago. yeah, so they are. I mean, we have, um, we do have some, um, some artwork that's like coming in. Um, and I think, yeah, you said that. yeah, we're still really looking. I think we're still looking, I, I guess I'm, st we're still looking to increase and have student voices that capture the space. And so, I think one of the thing one of the things that we've often talked about is like how do we get you know more students like interested in maybe a mural project that reflects them. I think the the amazing thing about this place is that we have an opportunity, even though this is not a permanent location, but we have an opportunity to actually showcase like who we are um, with the people with our students that are there right now. And so um, you know I would love to see continue like groups of students that want to take on a wall and you know get them a canvas and have them display what they care about and what they're passionate about and like and and who they are and their voices um, I think that there's it then creates more of that sense of community of that even though this place is temporary it is our home sure um, and it's so, going to be home for a while and it's going to be our home for a while yeah. and that's okay awesome <laughs> so like you know we'd love to work with uh, whoever on that and um, Fiona can yeah, yeah. That that sounds great that'd be awesome mm -hmm. yeah. well, she's an amazing owner herself yeah, are you, I believe I'm like I'm hearing you talk about the the university mall. I'm like, yes, tell me more. That sounds amazing. <laughs> well, we have murals in the food court, and murals, yeah. we have murals throughout that mall. Like, you know, we got three more places that we're gonna, you know, I mean, like thousands of square feet where we're gonna put murals there as well. It's awesome. And then in our art gallery as well, we yeah. have it there. But we have um, we have places on on the street too, you know, mm -hmm. mural locations. So this summer, or um, later later spring, <laughs> if we get a spring. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. I know. You know? <laughs> we can put some murals up, you know. But we love to have you um, over the winter have um, BHS students and BTC students work in our malls and put the cool. mural. And um, I don't know how you're going. Uh, what we how we going to do that? But it's, we have one place that uh, we was looking at, and it's like way like I don't know two three thousand. I don't know how many. How, how big huge. is that wall? It's so huge. I got it, but it's a project that. It's a be incredible thing that um, we can get the students to work in, you yeah. know, just do process, do do types of like if say if they came up with something in through the art department or, or through the arts, um, um, this one do some art. We don't have to do one whole thing. But you said you had one whole thing in mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm even long. I'm done talking. But yeah. you know, I'm no more. Right. Uh, she's the boss. She's yeah. the boss on that one. I ain't gonna, I'm done. So one, wow, that's a lot of space for. That'd be cool. I can't wait to see it. Mm -hmm. I don't, so, so for me, um, like one of my um, interns years ago said, Bruce, Bruce, come on. And we're doing a mirror. She said, come on, get on this wall, get on this wall. I said, I can't even draw a stick, man. One arm being <laughs> shorter than one way. You know, she said, Bruce, that's art. So every time somebody asks me, are you an artist? I think, I think what Vanessa saying back in 2003, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. Because, you know, one arm line, I'll, but I, there's a great book for that. I'm gonna go back to like my, you know, little my when I taught my little people. There's a great book um, by Peter Reynolds called Ish, and or no, sorry, it's the dot. He has a number of them, and it talks about how this one student, um, the art teacher was trying to have the student engage, and the student said, "I don't do art. I don't do art." And the art teacher said, "Just put a dot right there." <laughs> and at the and so they put a dot on the paper, and then the art teacher framed the dot. And so this student only started making dots and she made this whole gallery of different types of dots. She learned how to make, you know, dots by not making dots. And, um, and then at the end, she saw herself as an artist because she was creating art. This was her art. Right. And then she paid it forward to the next student. The book ends by her paying it forward to the next student. And well, so see, so you are an artist. <laughs> Everyone is I'm an artist. artist. Yeah. Nah. 
Now I told Fiona, <laughs> yeah. I told her today, I said, we're going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, we're going to do something together. We're going to make some art together. She's so going to teach me. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> so, um, well, you got any more questions? Um, well, I was just going to ask about um, the plans for the new school and where that's at, um, if you want to touch on that a little bit. Yeah, so we're, um, we're still, we've, I, the, I, the decision's been made that we are going to end up going back to Institute Road. Um, obviously, we're going to be looking at um, the, um, at the property and won't be going back into the, the existing building, but we'll be building um, in another area of the property, and so we're in the preliminary stages of, of resetting and restarting that work. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we'll be interviewing architects in the coming That's week. Be and, and then we'll, we'll be in um, back re-envisioning um, with creating plans and, mm -hmm. and moving forward. So um, I, we, we know where our home is. And I think that that's the most exciting piece is that we know where we're going. Yep. Um, and now we get to restart um, the process of, of re-envisioning what our new school will be. So, so more to come. Yeah. yeah, it's really exciting. I know, it's very exciting. So, so you and uh, Tom Flanagan, um, Burlington School District um, Superintendent, and you're the principal of Burlington High School. Now, you both are new. Yes. So how, so how do you guys get along? Great, <laughs> great. Um, so actually, it's, it's, um, it's w fun because um, Tom Flanagan moved up here most recently, mm -hmm. Superintendent Flanagan from Rhode Island, and I'm a Rhode Island native, so I get oh. to, you know, um, even though he's not a Rhode Island native, and he, 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 he's not from Rhode Island, but I, we get to um, do the Rhode Island-isms and because we're a small but mighty sure. state and talk about, you know, <laughs> different places. And um, so it's, it's really nice to have that connection. Um, he's really active in, in our schools a lot, and yeah. so it's great to have him, you know, see our students, you know, see our faculty and staff. Mm -hmm. um, he's committed to the work. and. And has been a really great partner yeah, like, as yeah. we go. So yeah. <laughs> I just see him on his bike. I'd be on my bike, and you know, we like, you know, he's, he's an avid bike rider. You know. Yeah. That's you know, cool to see too. You know. Yeah. You get around. And his his daughters play hockey, and I'm hopeful that my daughter will play hockey someday. So <laughs> maybe his, his. Are you a hockey player? Um, I what I don't want to tell you that I, I I played hockey in high school. I don't know if I can really say that I <laughs> was the best player. <laughs> Um, I tried really hard, <laughs> but um, you grew up in a hockey family, so oh, nice. yeah. Go. Well, I used to figure skate, <laughs> oh, but nice. I was never great, so I yeah. So, say the same. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I played, and I tried really hard, and I, I played through high school. But I played yeah. field hockey. Um, I went on and played field hockey in college. So yeah. no, that's yeah. good. That's good. Yeah. So you got any more questions? That was just about it. Awesome. Um, so yeah. so so, how how do the students like you? I don't know. You'd have to ask them. <laughs> what do you think? Um, that's a good question. Um, I think sometimes. <laughs> well, some I've, I've had a lot of people that go, "Oh my gosh, I didn't know you were the principal," because um, sometimes I'll you saw me with my backpack when I came in, and I'm sometimes in the hallways with my backpack walking around. Mm -hmm. So, um, I I think that you look like one of them. that people that. You know, I, I have a lot of students that come by and get candy from my office, and they mm -hmm. knock on my doors, and they're like, I know you have candy. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, yes, I do. Come on in. So it's it's been great getting it. Honestly, it's been great with all of our students back in one place, mm -hmm. um, all at the same time to be able to really um, get to, to know our students more. Today, I was um, sitting outside in the front lobby and was in the cafeteria and ended up playing a game of spoons with uh, five of our Five of our students, they taught me how to play. Um, I made it through one round, and then they beat me the next round, but I'm going to come back, and I'm going <laughs> to be quicker <laughs> at grabbing the spoons. <laughs> um, so, so they're great. Um, we, have, we have amazing students, amazing yeah. families. Like, what, this I is believe, an awesome I, I community. You know, I never heard anything that bad about you from a student. Oh, good. I hope, I hope but, not. <laughs> but uh, I believe that they, they you know, based on what, you, what you're do, working towards for them, they, they, should, they should be bringing apples every day. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Instead, they come and they take my candy. <laughs> but that's okay. That's, that's what it's right. there for. I keep, the ref I keep refilling it. That's right. So that's it's, right. it's good to have them come you by. Come in and you can see them. They can see you. Yeah. yeah so it's great. Awesome. Well, we're going to wrap the show up. And now uh, we want to thank our Laura McBride, the principal of Burlington High School, for being our guest today. Yeah, thank you I so much for having me. I had a lot of fun. So um, any, you got any parting words? That was really amazing, and I'm glad that we got to talk. <laughs> Hopefully yeah. we can follow up after here. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. That sounds yeah, great. Once we'll, your plans we'll, are in action a little bit more, we'll Yeah, see. I like it. 
Great. Well, thank you so yeah, much for having me. On our show. LeVar, yeah. you coming on, bro. You're I next. Got, we Sorry, coming. LeVar. LeVar, <laughs> I got you, bro. Coming on. <laughs> well, thank you for everybody to tune in to Straight Talk for my show, and see you later. Yeah. Thank you. All right, yeah.